Evening everybody and welcome to this week's Scam Pro Audio webinar. Uh, we've had a lot of special guests over the last few weeks. Uh, this week we're back to one of our own, our very own Simon Lyon, who's going to do the second part of his uh, Ableton tutorial. Um, Simon, as you probably remember, is a fully qualified uh, Ableton instructor, having been sent over to Berlin and have various parts of his brain uh, put into their uh, machinery and pulled back out again. So he can pretty much answer uh, any questions you might have on, on anything to do with Ableton. Um, before we get him up, I just want to uh, make a couple of points. Uh, we have been talking over the last few weeks about our Superb Velocity 2014 competition. Um, just to recap, this is a competition for anybody uh, involved in music. Uh, there are also for anybody involved in video and pictures for that matter, but from the music side of it, anybody who wants to try and create an electronic track or a pop tune or a rock tune, you really need to check this out. That There are some incredible prizes that you just can't buy. Uh, the chance to work in studios with top name producers, and I mean not messing about, top name producers. Please check out the adverts and look at them. Um, we had a situation where what we required was that you were to send in your entry and then you were also to send in a video which showed how you made it. Now that seems to have been a bit of a stumbling block for some people. So we've decided to change that and make it so that now all you need to do is send us in your entry, uh, something you're proud of, something that you've done yourself, something that you're really happy with and, and uh, you, you want other people to share. Um, and then if you have the chance or the opportunity to make a video showing us uh, how you did it or what techniques you used, please send that in as well. And we've kind of got a bit of a separate section for that. So um, please go to the SCAN website, look at the Velocity 2014 competition. We've got a lot of schools and colleges getting interested in getting involved, but we don't, you know, it's open to you as well, the, the great British public. So please come along, have a look at it and um, check it out. It's, uh, it's well worth getting involved in. All right, we're going to get some titles and when I come back, our very own Simon will be taking you through uh, Ableton and Push. Good evening everyone, how's it all going? So, as Steve mentioned, I'm here again to look at Ableton Live and Push. Now, if you saw the last tutorial, we're going to carry on, look a little bit deeper into Push. Um, if you didn't see the last one, it's available on the Scan Pro Audio YouTube channel. So go and have a look at that one. If you're new to Push and you haven't seen anything, um, you might want some explanations. But if you're up with us on the chat room, just ask questions. Keep them going, I'll try and answer questions and go over stuff. So I will ask um, Tom, who's moderating here, if there's any questions coming through about anything I've done before I move on to something. So um, I've got Push here and using Ableton Live 9.1. In 9.1, we had a, a revision where um, there's a, a few things that made a big difference. One is the ability to have two windows open at once. Um, if you can just cut to the screen, Tom, I can just show them this there. Um, users of things like Logic and... Uh, any other programs would probably just think this is commonplace, but if I um, just use my shortcuts here, um, for the, if you have two monitors at home, you can have now the arrangement view, which is this one, and the session view on two different monitors. But even if you're using one, it means you can actually see both screens at the same time. So I just open that monitor there. If you go to view, you've got an option now called second window. So if you haven't updated your Ableton Live 9, please do because that's one of the major features. Um, even if you're using it on a laptop, you can still look at both and if you press tab, it will switch those round. So that's something that just to tell you straight off that it's a really big deal. If you haven't got that, um, I know some people bought um, Ableton Live from Scan and then didn't update it and didn't realize that there's all these features. So that's one big deal. And the other thing which can is really important is there is a step sequencer. So if I go back to push now, um, I've got a project open, but the idea is that I will, um, I just want to show you what I've done basically, and then we can talk about it and I'll take you through it. So I've just got a project open. Uh, I'm looking at session view here, and there's, there's two different ones I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you like a, a monophonic, like a bass line. I'm going to show you um, some chords using the step sequencer. So I've got a pattern here. So you can hear that there. This is um, 
one of the bass amps. It's uh, called Club Amp. And if I can get into the um, press device there, it allows me to see all the settings across the top. So straight away I've got a filter. And if you can just cut to the screen again, Tom, as well. Um, on tonight's um, webinar, I want to show you a little bit more about what's going on on the screen as well. Because the first time I said, you don't have to look at it, and it doesn't matter. But as I'm moving this now, what's happening is, I'm moving the macro controls, which are part of the instrument. So this is filter, and you've got the amp amount. So that's just like the sort of dry sound. Within this rack, there is... Um, We've got a cabinet, an amp sound, and I'll take you through some of these, but this is basically how it's all put together. Are we okay, Tom? Okay, we're just going to turn the volume up slightly. So basically, by pressing device, I can go into the controls of this particular one. So in this case, it's club amp, and I'm moving that there. So put it back to where it was before. So that's blending in an amp. So I'm using that kind of sound. And this is all plain. If I press note mode now, you go back to the push. Just wait that. I press note mode, and this is up to this revision in 9.1. This is what you saw. Um, go to session there, playing this clip. If I press note mode twice, you now get over to the sequencer. And as you can see there, there's some notes. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear this one. Just press delete and start again. So now I've got this sequencer there. You've got where it's blue, just like on this mode, blue represents the tonic or you know the key of what you're in. Now I should have mine, I think I've got G minor. If I press scale there, I've got it minor, G minor. Um, so it will only show me notes that are in that scale. So play on this screen. I'll take my octave down. So this I'm playing now is this is G minor. Okay, so if I press the note button again, so you've, you've basically got session, which is your overview there. If I press note, you've got the note mode. But if I press note again, this is the step sequencer. So up until this point, I've not really used the um, touch strip. And if you look as I move that, the top right, it's telling me the range. This is just like your piano roll basically now. So if I go down, the blue notes represent the tonic. So if I hit that one there, something happens straight away. Now, if you notice at the top here, just like we have in the drums, the drum racks, it's a sequencer that's going through. If I just double tap that one there, it'll just stay around one note. So what you've got here now, I'm set to 16th, and basically I've got eight boxes. So in the drum mode, you had it in different rows, but this just covers one row. So you've got eight. So in this current division, I'm only looking at half a bar. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll play it so you, you can hear the difference. I'll put the metronome on. So this is one, two, and then three, four would actually be on the next one. So if I want the next bar, I hold this one, and this will be the next bar. So what I'll do, I'll put a pattern in so you can see it. I'll just do it and explain as I go along, and then I'll go back over it. So if I press this note there, that means note on. It's simple, note on, note off. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a monophonic, so it only play one note at once. If I do another note there, it will only play the top one. But we can look at chords later. So if I do this it will play just those notes. I'll turn the metron off. So if I want to play those lower, I just move this down. As I move the strip down there, it'll say sequence A0 to G1. So if I play this one now, if I just go down a bit further, there's a fly in the studio. <laughs> there it is. Um, if I just play this a bit lower, so if I play that one now, so it's a bit lower note. It is supposed to be a bass line. So if I do something like this, so now it's just playing those notes, you can see it. So that's just that half. If I play this one now, if I hold them down together, it'll play the first half, and then there's nothing in the second half. So if I try and play in there, if I'm not quick enough, I'll just go over it. So the easiest way is to tap that one, and I can do some of the notes. So try something else. So if I play them both together, if I hit both, it'll play the first half and the second half together. First page, second page. So that there is using 16s. Now, if that was a little bit complicated, I'll go back and simplify it. So I'll go back to page one. I'll get rid of it. Page two, do that. Uh, I could have just pressed delete for the pattern, but I want to show you this way. If I press eight, 
Now it, the resolution is eight, so this will be one per box, and it'll all fit on one page now. So if I do that there, and I just draw that kind of pattern, and I press both together, that's all of it now. So now it'll play it on. I can fit two lots on this time. So now I can do the next page. So this is twice as twice as much information, but half the note length. So most of you are probably used to working with 16th notes, and if I put the drums on as well, it, it grooves better with that. But basically, it's a step sequencer that goes along, and I'll put it back to 16s, and I'll delete my pattern. Just clip delete at the top there. So I'll stick to 16s because it works better with the music I've got underneath. So what I'll do, I'll play my drums, which I've got under there. I should have some drums there. Let's go back to session. So turn the volume down on those. So just while I'm here, that if I press volume at the top, this is the volume for all of the instruments there. Um, as I've already got this in, um, this track's already enabled. I'll, I'll, I'll do one from scratch in a minute so you can see. But that's the volume for the drums. So if I just play that there again. So if I do it against the drums, you'll see how I build a, um, a bass line using a step sequence. So I'm on club amp, so I select the track there. Now I'm onto this, and if I press note, I'm now in this one. So if I press that there, so there's one. So that's just one half of the bar. Press both. See, I missed that then because I wasn't quick enough. So I'll just focus on the second half. So I mean, I like that as it is on its own there, but I'll put them both together. And I'll just play the first half. So that, you can make that loop round. Press both together, it will play the first half and the second half. Okay, so that's just one way of putting it together. You can, um, if I hit these at the top, you can extend the pattern all the way along and you can come up with some really interesting stuff. That's just a, a good way to get started. But um, one good thing about this as well is you can actually automate what you're doing within this. Um, as I mentioned sorry, last week, you can do this without looking at the computer screen, but what I've started to do is this is kind of now part of like the hub in my studio. So I have this and I may have other MIDI controllers and obviously I'm looking at the screen when I'm making music, but this just makes things a little bit quicker. It takes out the stages of creating something. So looking at this automation now, what I'm going to do, um, if I actually just touch one of the buttons, just like in the drums, if I touch this button here, hold it down, it's on notes there. So for now I'm going to leave it on notes. and you can nudge a note forward and backwards if you want to just push it or slightly swing something. And you've also got um, step. So what I can do here, if I just get rid of that one, we'll just focus on this one bar here. So if you watch this note there. So you've got like a groove going there. If I want this to last longer, so if I want to hold it rather than do a note every 16th note, if I want to hold this longer, maybe up to there, I want to go four steps across. So hold that down and if I press length and as I move this, if you watch, it goes yellow and it fills the time. So basically I'm pressing that. When you let go, you can't see it. If I hold it down, you can adjust the length of the step there. So I hope that's clear there. So when I play this now, it'll be go boom, da 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 sort of thing. Here we go. Get the idea, yeah? So it makes it less jerky, a bit groovier. So that's how you do that. And I put the second part as well, press them together. So if I want to do that to the second half, um, what I could do there is extend that one, but that will run into there. Um, so I, I can just try, I'll put another note at the beginning and I'll make this longer. So get rid of that one, hold that down and extend that. So I've got another part there. So play that one on its own. They're a bit similar now though. Press both together. So just with the other mode, um, if I want to copy that and make a variation, I'm just going to duplicate, which is just here, duplicate, and it will copy that onto another scene. So it's, it's duplicated to scene 27. Uh, what that means now is I can do something a little different. Now in this case, I'll look at some automation. So 
when I press this down and I press automation, I can automate the basic parts of the channel, such as volume, pan, and the sends. But I want to do something a bit different with this one. So first of all, before I go into that, I'll just come out of that. And as I'm playing it, just before I showed you, you could press device. So if I play this now, press device. And what device does is take you into whatever's playing, uh, be it synth, the drum machine, and it lets you go a little deeper into the control. So I press device. In this case, it is the club amp, which is basically um, an operator synth with um, some effects on, that have been grouped together. So it's like an instrument rack, basically. So I've got all these controls at the top. Now, it's these controls that I want to automate. So if I just play anywhere and see what we can do, do something. So filter across the top. So that'd be interesting to automate that. Uh, another good one is this overtone, which is, is linked to one of the oscillators. If I move that, um, if you can just switch to uh, live on the screen, Tom. Right, if I, see I'm moving that one there. This is one of the macros, this is overtone. And if you look just to the right of it, it says course. It's part of the um, oscillator A, and it just changes that sound. So when you hear it, if I press play now, you know, that's, it was on three before. So it'd be quite a good one to uh, change. Okay, so we've got some something at the top that we can automate. So now if I press um, one of the pads, now it, the automation, because I opened that device there, is focused on the last thing that I was moving. So I'll press automation on this one now. So what I can do, I can start to move some of these things. If I, if I move filter on this note here, you see you've got a little block. And the block is similar to just like when you have on, on the program itself, you can see a little orange box appears to say it's been um, automated. Um, just to remember as well, make sure this automation button is on there because that'll do clip automation to make sure that's on. Now, as I hold this down, if I can just ask you kindly again, Tom, to flip to the screen because I, I want to make sure you, you understand what's going on in this one because um, sort of seeing is believing. And just like I said before, um, I've started to use it in conjunction to do things faster. So I'm holding down this step. If I move the filter, you can see there, it's done straight away. To actually do that with um, a mouse, it's still quite easy on Ableton Live, but it's done it really quickly. So if I hold another one down and do it, you see straight away I've just jumped to another 16th note along. And this is because I've got it set to 16. So I can identify any point in that loop and then do something with it and it'll do it perfectly in the right place and the amount you want. So I can pick notes out of the sequence, like that one there for example, and I can filter it up, down, whatever you want. So if I play that whilst you're, I'll look at down the screen, you've got all different views there. Fantastic, Tom. So play this now. And if I can go back into that automation, you can see where it is. So I'm going to move the first one. So let's automate something else. I'll do, when I hit this note, I'm going to make it really high. So you can see there, it's got that on there. I'll do it on that screen. So what happened there, it's automated. And because I moved it, I took over the automation. And it's gone in brackets now. And if I want to go back to that, if you were playing this live and it was already pre-automated and you're playing your pattern back. You want to control this. Once you're finished, all you need to do is re-enable the automation. So if I press shift, and if you look at the screen, can you see at the top right there, there's a re-enable automation button. It's like at the top here somewhere. You can see it there, the orange button. If I press shift and automation, you'll see there's an orange button at the top and it disappears. And what that does then is returns back to the automation. So I'll move it again. I want to go back. Hold shift. Okay. So that's handy if you're performing live and you've got patterns, you want to get involved, do all the sort of filters, and if you want to get back to it, re-enable the automation. Okay, so that is automating um, a simple sequence, and then you can, if I, if I make a new uh, one now, it will just it won't remember all that. That's just exclusive just to that one. If I go back to my session now, and um, I'll just come out of that one so you can see what I'm doing. If I press session, this one, 
Uh, was there one there? It's got different automation on it. So the good thing about this is you can have same set of notes, but a different set of automation because the automation is per clip. So you can do all kinds of different things without destroying the MIDI. It's non-destructive. You can just do what you want, save it, make a new version of it. So you can have as many versions as you've got. You can have tracks, which on most computers is hundreds, more than you'd need. Okay, so that is just using a monophonic source. It's just a bass. If I play it on this one, press note again. You can't play chords. So if you want to automate something with chords, I'll show you that one now. So I'm going to go back into here and... I've opened, um, I did have a guitar one, so I don't know what I've done with it, so I'll open another one. So I'm going to open a new instrument, I'm going to add track, I'll do it from this one. So I want a guitar sound, so I'm going to go instrument, and I'm going to go down here, guitar and plucked, and I'm just going to use dual amped crunch, so I'll select that one. So if I play this now, um, again it's in the same key, what did I use, G minor? Yeah, G minor. So, um, if any of you guitarists, you you know, you're used to different keys in different places, but push works just the same. Um, for those people who saw the last one, if I hold scale down, you can see these are the notes that are in key. So every note is in G minor. Um, for the people who asked last time, what if I want to play outside? Uh, and I don't mean go outside in the sun. I mean play outside the scale. You press that chromatic, and there are the notes you can play. So you can play every note there. So this is. Uh, play a bit high. There's G. You now the next note there is the note in the scale. But if you want to play, so if you're playing guitar, that's every fret. Um, guitarists can probably like look at this and and see uh, familiar patterns. Do it from there. And if you did it, um, if you're used to a pentatonic scale, you can see. So instantly, if you know your scales, you can do that. If that's pentatonic, you're going to do the blues. So I'll make it easy, though. Just do that. Don't make it hard for yourself. This is about creation. Just get your ideas down. You can do all that later or just do it your own way. So I want to do the note sequence now. So I press note again, and now I can start sequencing the guitar. Now, the same way, I'm going to look at device as well and look at all the ways that I can change the guitar. I'm just going to sequence some notes. So this time I'm thinking more of chords. So I'm just going to press this. This again is the, the root, so I'll stick to the tonic just for now. Actually, I'll just stop it so you can only hear that one. So I'll press that one there, get rid of that. And I'll just make it so you can only hear the, um, there we go, guitars in there. So I can solo it out. So if I press solo, um, I can just solo the guitar. So the blue light there, if you can see the screen again, it's soloed. and I just hold the solo button down. So I'll just concentrate on that one. I'll go back into note mode. So now I've got, so that one's quite low. On this particular setting, the low notes, the lower octaves that are outside the guitar's range just turn into this kind of like guitar effects and string noise. So I need to go higher. So if you just watch on the side there as I'm selecting through there, one of the things I forgot to mention before is once you've put some notes in, um, say for example, um, we'll go just up here. Move a bit higher up. Do it if I do it there. So that's one note there. And you can also use the octave up and down buttons rather than using the strip. And if I move like this, it will go up an octave, down an octave. If you hold shift, it will go up a line at a time. So what I'm trying to show you, there you go. If you see that on here they've split apart there, it means that that's to move down, but where there's a little dot shows you that you've got a note up there somewhere. If I move up there, find my note. Where did I do it? It's down there. There it is. So if I want to play a chord, I can play two notes at once. So it probably better sound a bit higher for a guitar. So I'll, I'll try it in the next octave. So I'll move up one. So I'll try it here. There you go. I'll just go up a little bit more. So that's again just one part there, still on 16th, and while I'm doing that, I press device again, 
I can change the way it sounds. So that's like a clean one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change the sound to uh, a distort distorted one. Uh, the reason is it's got a distortion and I can bring that up and down and it's just got more of more sort of tones to play with. So what I've done then, I went into browse and I'm just going to move straight down. That was crunch and this one's heavy. So play that, it probably will sound quite loud. Well, let's just do it anyway. Get to my volume there. So volume at the ready, just in case. There you go. So on this one, you've got more of an amp sound. Now if I just take it out of solo, I'm just going to put uh, drums were here. So the drums are playing in the background there. So what I can do now, go back to this. So that's what my pattern looks like if I played it on this screen. Uh, sorry, go back into that. Press it again. And if I press device, get into that and you can have a look at the different ways now this one has got an articulation on it and what it is if I can just show the screen again Tom this particular patch is made up of um, different types of guitar samples so if I look around here you've got um, a dead guitar sound which is just muted you've got open mute glide and basically it's the different ways of playing the guitar they've tried to put that into there so it sounds relatively realistic if I play it now you can move between those Turn the amp down. So that's more of a, a usable sound. You're probably hearing like a house track or something. And you can add a bit of chorus on there. And I can just do part two. I'll just press that one there. Next other side of the bar. And I'll just do something different with the cards. I'll put another... Uh, move it up slightly so I can get some extra notes. So press both those together. So again, I've changed the articulation to go from a different style of playing. Again, you could automate that as well. And you can add some reverb to it, the room there. If I go back to the session, you can see this is where I'm triggering the clips from. I'll try the bass. Now this is currently soloed, so to hear that, I'm going to have to... Not necessarily going to fit, but... So, obviously I'd work them to get them right, but I just tried a different thing there. So, this is, if I go back to here, in fact, I'll take it out of solo. You can switch between solo and mute. You can't solo and mute at the same time there. But um, if you can see the screen, if I press this, that turns the channel on and off. So they're the currently soloed. So if I press solo again, I want to un-solo those tracks. You can see it. Now all the yellow ones appear again. So when you press mute, if you look at the screen there, this is just turning the tracks on and off so you can hear them. So obviously if I do this, you're just going to hear whatever's at the top. So this would play just the drums, which is that one. Let's turn those off. You just hear the drums. And if I press this one, it'll if it's still playing, if I press the this session there, it will play whatever's going on there at the moment. So in this case, there's a bass line. Okay, so that's basically looking at this, um, the new step sequencer. And as I said before, you hit note twice to get into it. That's one thing that a lot of people have asked, how do you get into this secret mode, which is not secret anymore, it's just common knowledge now. So you've got session, which is your overview, and you've got note, and if you hit note again, you get into this. So if you pick something such as a piano, a guitar, strings, you can do polyphonic, which goes in a row up like that. So just like you'd play chords on the other screen that way, you're actually doing it all vertical in a line, so it's playing it all at once. Um, probably influenced by lots of apps out there. A lot of um, iOS apps have got sequences like this and um, lots of things over the, um, the Tenorion used to work like this as well, if any of you know what that is, Yamaha. And uh, that kind of idea. So some people are used to this from sequences. So I think the flexibility of having this, that version, you know, um, and you know, the clips and the, in the drums, you've got a lot of different ways of getting your music out there. 
So do have an experiment with that in the note mode. Have we got any questions, Tom, so far about that? No, I think that's all being quite soon concise. Okay, good. Um, there's so much you can do with this. Um, please let us know any sort of techniques you've come across. I could go on about this for days. Trust me, I usually do. Um, so it, it's really it's simple to do, but you can go really deep with it. With the automation stuff, you can really get some great sequences. I mean, this is not the platform for me to show off or anything. So, you know, this is just um, to give you techniques to get going. Okay. Now, some of you are thinking, all right, this is all good, but I haven't got a push. How can I do that? So I'm going to show you a step sequencer that's part of Ableton Live 9 suite. And this is part of Max for Live. Now, I'm just going to sort of introduce Max for Live for the first time in this kind of series, but I will spend more time on it. Um, if you buy the full version of Live 9, which is Live 9 Suite, Max for Live is now integrated into um, Ableton Live 9. And um, what Max for Live is basically is it extends the functionality of Live. So there's a lot of new software coming out at the moment, and people say that you know this program can do that and this can do this. The thing with Max for Live is it allows people who want to create new modules, um, features, all kinds of stuff for Ableton Live to write program. There's a whole community of Max for Live, and you can download free instruments and things like that. If you go to um, the Ableton website, uh, you can actually download them uh, free. If you, if you have the full suite, there's all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to show you one um, aspect of it, and I'll just show you really easy. I'll start a new set so you can see it. So I don't need the push for now, Tom. You can uh, come off that. So for those of you lucky enough to have a push, um, awesome. For those who aren't, there's still so much you can do in Live 9. Um, so just I've got uh, one thing that I will say to speed up your workflow. One thing that's great about Live 9 is you've got the browser. And if you look over here, it says uh, Command and F or Control F if you're on a PC. If you press Command and F while you're on the keyboard, you can just start typing straight away. So the bass sound I used there was called Club Amp. So if you know where it is, then you can go and find it. Uh, it's in instruments and it's around here somewhere. But if you're not sure, all you need to do is just put, um, I'll start searching for it and I'll just type, if I go back to here, if I just type Command F and then start typing Club. And what happens if you see, when I press Command F, all results appeared um, there. So it will search through all of it. So if I just type Club, and probably before I even finish it, it's already populating the browser there. So now if I look, I, I know it was called um, Club Bass, but now straight away you can see it was actually called Club Amp Bass. So it's appeared there. So rather than look through the other categories, it's really there. So if I did that from scratch there, and I couldn't remember, it was called Club Amp something, Command F and start typing Club. It was called Club something, and you just type Amp. And before you know it, it's there. So I can just click that, and then it's straight on. I could have actually pressed Return. It would have just opened it. So here's the same sound that we had before. Um, so that's the same sound. Um, you can use it off your keyboard if you haven't got a MIDI instrument. I'll t take the octave down there. So what I'm going to use now is um, I won't use the browser in the same way just so you can see where it is. But if I go to Max for Live now, once you've um, installed Max for Live, which you can do it from the Ableton website, you download it and it, sh it just appears in your um, preferences. I'll just show you my preferences. Um, it's in the library and you can see where, um, where's my Max for Live? I'll just go out of it there. But when you download it, um, it just automatically configures itself so you can just have access to these and then you get some instruments with it and some of the, on, as I said on the website, if you go there, you can download the Max for Live Essentials, which what I'm gonna show you is um, a MIDI effect. And it, again, I can type it. We want, uh, if I just type SEQ, it's a mono sequencer. So just like I was using the sequencer that's built in here, if you don't have push, you can use this. So if I double click that, it will open it. And it opens Max for Live, the program, and it's kind of running behind now. So here's the mono sequencer, and it puts it just before uh, the instrument. So what you've got here now is most of you have seen this kind of thing before. Um, it's basically a, a currently set to 16, just as before, it's a sequencer. Now, one good thing about this um, is you can make it play in scale as well. 
So if, you, if I choose that little box there, you've got not as many options as the push, but you've got these. You've got uh, Ionian, which is the first mode major. We won't go into that at the moment, but Ionian and Aeolian is like the natural minor scale. So we'll go for that one. And once I've put the notes in, um, you, can, you can come up with a pattern and then put conform to scale, and it will make the sequencer play those notes. So it's just like the push in that respect. So on the left, you can choose these categories. So in this one, you've got octave. So straight away, I'm going to get to play minus two. I'm just going to put that all the way across. It doesn't matter at the moment. You just kind of, you can be random. If you want to be really random, just press the random button. In fact, I'll show you. Press random, and off you go. Now, to play this, you can ju just play the actual sequencer itself, um, Ableton Live. So you press play. Now, that is pretty random, but it's usable. And if I go back to pitch, you click pitch there, you can conform to scale. So it's actually in Aeolian. Press conform to scale. So even though it's random now, it will only play notes from that scale. So you can do all kinds of things. You can change the octave, the velocity, which is how loud the note is. So you can put some variation in that. And you can do duration, which is how long each note lasts. If I just play again, you can change this. So the higher they go, you can make the notes like I showed you in the push before where I could stretch the notes out. It's the same sort of thing. Um, you can repeat things. But one good thing about it is you can build up patterns. If any of you have used um, any kind of sequencer or you know bass sequencer, you can store patterns. So if I want to um, search through patterns, if I start moving that now, it'll just go to the default patterns. But if I just go and copy this one, press copy, select a new location, and then just paste it in. And you can do all kinds of variations. So if I go to octave now, you can, you know, make it jump up and down octaves. I mean, you go in there, decide what you want. Another good thing about this as well is you can change the pitch of the sequence using MIDI as well. So if I play it, that's pretty crazy. I'll just turn it down a bit. If you play it, you can actually, I'm using my keyboard to change the pitch of the sequence so you can make it match a certain note so if you come up with something really good you can make it follow the key of your song and the, the degrees of a scale by moving it so that's just a, a quick way to try and emulate that if you've not got push yet and you want a mono sequencer some people i know start their tracks using just a mono sequencer and a simple drum rack to, to get things going because it's you know you're not drawing things in the same way or programming things you're just using your cursors it's great if you're on the laptop that kind of thing. I'm Jonathan Harrison, uh, DOP. I've uh, been around the business 30, 40 years, uh, and I've been asked by uh, Scan Pro Video to be part of their masterclass series to pass on core skills of lighting, which seem, by what I see on television, to be missing. Everybody's jumping up and down over 4K, 2K, large sensors, but that ain't gonna make you beautiful pictures. What does make you beautiful pictures is high quality light, fly properly with good tools and some of those tools are made by Dadolite. Uh, we'll be looking at some of the new LED technology um, which is coming out from Germany and America. Classic tools that um, uh, will last you an awful long time if they're looked after. We'll be doing a lighting masterclass that will help um, beginners and, and old hands alike. Hopefully I'll be able to pass on hints, tips and ideas how to just create those glossy images we're all hoping to produce. Velocity 2014 Speed and Direction for UK Digital Creatives So there you have it. Um, more information on the Velocity uh, competition and indeed a live webcast coming from Media City. So uh, thanks once again to Simon. Uh, every week we've been doing a special thing where if you, uh, if you email us in the, the word of the day, uh, we will email you back some special prices. Um, but to be honest, I can't think of one. So just email us and say hi uh, and we'll email you back some prices. Um, it seems silly you trying to figure out what the word was when we couldn't think of one. So um, just
Just send us an email and we will send you back some uh, special pricing. The, the email uh, is on the bottom of the screen now. It's webinar, webinar at scan.co.uk. Very efficient. Um, for, for the old school amongst you, you can still get to us by scam pro audio at scan.co.uk. But for the time being, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks once again to Simon and Cheers. we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.